The face of Le Mans has changed quite a bit over the years with different track configurations. In the 1980s, they felt that 253 miles an hour was getting a bit fast, so they modified the track. But then along came Nissan with the R90 CK. In 1990, they still achieved 238 miles an hour with two chicanes on the Moltan straight. Wow, this is, some, this is a bit of, I'm going to take a moment here, driving Mark Blundell's 1990 Nissan, the car that he's destroyed the competition with during qualifying, set a time that was six seconds faster than anybody else, when the uh, wastegates on the turbos basically got jammed, fully shut, which meant it was over boosting massively, but a car that was supposed to be 800 horsepower, Pumping out 1100 plus, and I'm in it. I'm in this car. <laughs> this is such a good feeling. It feels familiar but different. I've raced here in lots of different categories, including LMP1, which had 800 horsepower. But you have to respect these cars every time you get in them. They really are sensationally fast and powerful with huge amounts of downforce and grip, slick tyres that need warming up. But my immediate feeling, as I'm just getting to grips slowly, yeah, is to watch out for that bloody turbo. There's really very little power in the lower revs. I'm just tootling around here and the car knows it. Nothing's happening at 3,000, nothing's happening at 4,000, something's happening now. I'm still tootling. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah, just felt the, um, the tail squirm in a straight line there. This car's not ready to receive the full power yet. The tyres are cold. And uh, my stuff. This turbo. Yay, 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 yay. Oh, bloody hell. Well, the car walking around slightly on these cold tyres. It doesn't like it at the moment. I don't like it either. To really feel how this car handles, they've got to be hot. It's hot in your mouth. You just hear that pop off out. Each time I lift off the gas, the wastegate just opens, releases the pressure from the turbo. That's not what was happening with Blundell and his hot lap. Fully closed, insane levels of power, and really a good chance that the engine would have detonated itself, but by some miracle, it didn't. Well, oh, this is exciting, man. I'm starting the lap. Ah! There we go. Man, this car walks. Just feel it walking around. It's going to be a different animal when I get things working fully, but... Oh, she's a beast, man. She's a beast. Ah. Come on! Woo. Even in a straight, this thing is vicious when those turbos, those twin turbos come in on that three and a half litre Nissan engine. You've got to know where you're going and where you're pointing this bad boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Brakes feel good. Nice firm brake pedal, that's always reassuring. A little bit of understeer as that torque crushes these rear tyres. Yeah, come on! Come on! It's an angry car. And it was an angry lap from Mark Blundell. And he hustled this thing around. Savage machine. Walking its way down the straights. Come on! Lovely gearbox. Sweet. Like a little Formula Ford. In big. I ain't looking at the camera. I'm too busy. <laughs> oh, sweet sound. It's a high revving engine as well. We're revving up to about 8,000 RPM. No, seven and a half. And as I predicted, now that we're on top, getting 
the response on the throttle that I was expecting. Lovely balance on the wheel, not too heavy. And I'm just still taking a ginger through here. Car is very pointy. Uh, if I had time, I would probably make a few changes. Its uh, front is a little bit lazy in the low speed, which I quite like. Down the straights. We're a little bit out on aero. Too much front aero at the moment. And so the car is walking around a little bit more than it would do here in the race. And Mark Mattel, Julian Bailey would tune that out. You can do it in these cars, obviously, by increasing the rear wing or changing the brake angle of the car to give it less nose. It's got a lot of nose at the moment. So my straights don't feel very straight. Yeah, come on. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. Bad boy. Ah, oh, well, a phenomenal experience. Absolutely incredible to be near one of these Le Mans legends. And even 30 years on, Uh, imagine racing it for 24 hours. No power steering, but I'm surprised at actually how light the wheel is. It will get heavier over time as the grip comes in more, but I've just started to get the tyres working a little bit now. When I watched that video back of Mark Lundell giving it everything on that qualifying lap. Uh, look here, the headlights he used to flash at the car that was blocking his progress on the way into Porsche curves. I know what he was experiencing to manhandle this brute car. And it's the sort of car that once it gets away, you're into a heap of trouble very quickly. But it's eminently drivable. Very familiar to me from my experiences in prototype racing except for the turbo. That is another level. Well, weirdly, I bet you, if you ask Mark, you'd probably say the throttle was that much more pure on the limit like that. Well, that's probably my time up, sadly. I don't want to get out of this car and drive it for hours. Ah. Absolutely bloody brilliant. Savage car. I love it. And hot into the pits. Love, love it, love it, love it. 238 miles an hour on the Molesound straight with two chicanes to slow you down. That is what I'm talking about. This is an epic machine, one of a kind. What an absolute treat it was to drive this amazing piece of Le Mans history. Sitting where Blundell sat, in the hot seat, feeling the immense power of that engine really was incredible. If you're looking for a true track monster with an iconic racing story, check out the auction listing in the description below.